March 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 11 from the New Testament. Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. Now it was Mary who anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and wiped his feet dry with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, look, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness will not lead to death, but to God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he remained in the place where he was for two more days. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples replied, Rabbi, the Jewish leaders were just now trying to stone you to death. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks around in the daytime, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks around at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After he said this, he added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to awaken him. Then the disciples replied, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had been talking about his death, but they thought he had been talking about real sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go too, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb four days already. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, so many of the Jewish people of the region had come to Martha and Mary to console them over the loss of their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will grant you. Jesus replied, Your brother will come back to life again. Martha said, I know that he will come back to life again, in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And the one who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who comes into the world. And when she had said this, Martha went and called her sister Mary, saying privately, The teacher is here and is asking for you. So when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had come out to meet him. Then the people who were with Mary in the house consoling her saw her get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the people who had come with her weeping, he was intensely moved in spirit and greatly distressed. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Thus the people who had come to mourn said, Look how much he loved him. But some of them said, This is the man who caused the blind man to see. Couldn't he have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? Jesus, intensely moved again, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was placed across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, replied, Lord, by this time the body will have a bad smell because he has been buried four days. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that you have listened to me. I knew that you always listened to me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing around here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he shouted in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
The one who had died came out, his feet and hands tied up with strips of cloth and a cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. The many of the people who had come with Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and reported to them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called the council together and said, What are we doing for this man is performing many miraculous signs? If we allow him to go on in this way, everyone will believe in him and the Romans will come and take away our sanctuary and our nation. Then one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said, You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is more to your advantage to have one man die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. Now he did not say this on his own, but because he was high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the Jewish nation, and not for the Jewish nation only, but to gather together into one the children of God who are scattered. So from that day they planned together to kill him. Thus Jesus no longer went around publicly among the Judeans, but went away from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and stayed there with his disciples. Now the Jewish feast of Passover was near, and many people went up to Jerusalem from the rural areas before the Passover to cleanse themselves ritually. Thus they were looking for Jesus, and saying to one another as they stood in the temple courts, What do you think, that he won't come to the feast? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should report it so that they could arrest him. God, today, help us get this right. It is not for our glory that we do anything in this world. It is only for your glory that our words exist, our actions exist, that we have the gifts and talents that you have given us. All of them are here to glorify you. Many people, not just Christians, have heard the story of Lazarus, of Jesus making a dead man come alive, resurrecting him. But there's some pieces of the story that people kind of overlook in the excitement that someone who is dead is, is no longer dead. And it comes towards the end of that story where Jesus turns to you and says, Father, thank you for listening to me. I know that you always listen to me, but for the sake of this crowd listening to me, that they may believe that you sent me, I am saying this again. Even your son, Jesus Christ himself, even Jesus Christ turns around and gives you glory for what is being done here on earth through his gifts, his abilities, and because of you even Jesus Christ. And as we go through the rest of the story and Lazarus is risen up, it says many of the people who had come with Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. So we know this miraculous miracle took place that all these people saw what your son was able to do in your name and then they believed. So here's what I find very interesting about this story. We don't hear anything from Lazarus. Here's a man who apparently was sick, so sick that he ended up dying. He's walking out of a, a cave, wrapped up like a mummy, smelling of spices, seeing his friends. And we don't hear any part of his story. But what we do hear is many of the people who saw this happen then believed in Jesus, Jesus as your son, Jesus as the son of God. We can't bring glory to ourselves. It is not about Lazarus now being alive, although obviously his friends, including Jesus, were delighted to have him personally back with them, of course. But that's not the glorification part. It's not about Lazarus. It's about the empowerment that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth. And him turning around, Jesus Christ <laughs> turning around and giving you all of the glory, just like we should be. So when things happen in our life, and things will happen in our life, including things that we see that are bad, 
everything in our life you promised to make good. All of that is for your glory. When I have a sale in my business, it is for your glory because you allowed that to happen. When I have a friend who doesn't feel well and they, they over time get better, that is for your glory because you allowed that to happen. When I get that new house, when I get that job promotion, when I get married, when I have a child, when all these things are given to me, they are only given to me with the authority of you. You reign supreme over every single thing in this world. Not the bits and pieces I choose, <laughs> but reign supreme over everything. And if you are going to bless me with all of these amazing things, then it is going to be for your glory that I receive them. Please help us keep in mind, God, as we go through today, that everything we have is because of you. When you ask us to tithe off of the money we receive, it is only because of you that we even have that money in the first place. When we're given a child, when we're given the ability to have a house with a roof over our head, when we're giving, given food, it is because you have allowed that to happen. And amazingly, even when bad things happen to us, it is for your glory, the opportunities that will come out of that. Just like Lazarus' death and his resurrection were not the amazing thing, but the glorification and the people who believed in your son, Jesus Christ, at that.